This black box is called a NAS, and NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. This one here is called a DS1019 Plus from a brand called Synology, and inside it are five slots for hard drives. So how could a bunch of hard drives inside a box possibly be the answer to many of my workflow problems, and how is this even different from an external hard drive that's just hooked up to my computer? Well, very different, and that is thanks to two key things. A NAS system like this is hooked up to the network and it has its very own operating system. In fact, it's actually like a little computer on its own. It has its own processor and RAM, and you can also think of it as your own private data server. Among my circle, at least, I noticed that not many people have a NAS system, so it's not talked about a lot. So what I really wanted to share in this video is since I just recently got a NAS, let's talk about what sort of benefits it's brought about to my workflow. So you know what to expect if you are concerned considering investing in a NAS for yourself as well. Or if you never planned on buying one but bought one after watching this video, then oops. So ever since integrating a NAS into my workflow, I can think of at least six problems that this has solved for me, starting with the universal problem of running out of storage. I'm sure it happens to everybody, but speaking for content creators like myself, we run out of storage about as fast as we run out of new subscribers, so while a NAS won't make new subscribers appear for you, it is a very good long-term solution for the problem of running out of storage, and that's because of their scalability. And what that really means is you can keep growing the capacity of your NAS over time as you need more. For example, my DS1019 Plus is a five bay NAS. Inside of it, I have filled four out of the five bays with Seagate Ironwolf drives that are 10 terabytes each, but this NAS can actually take drives up to 16 terabytes each, so that technically maxes this out at 80 terabytes. But for now, I've got one slot left, so when I need more, I can simply get another drive and pop it in there to add more storage. And when I need even more, I can actually buy an additional expansion unit and hook it up to this main unit to add five more bays. Now that almost sounds like buying a lot of items and spending a lot of money, but think of it this way. That means you won't have to shell out a huge sum of money to purchase extra storage that you probably won't need need yet, but there's the headroom for future upgrades when you will eventually need it. So this in comparison to how I previously handled my data, whenever a drive fills up, I would have to empty out the drive or swap out that drive for a new empty one and stash that filled up drive somewhere probably among a pile of other filled up drives, and that ends up in data all over the place, meaning I'll probably never find that one PDF I'm looking for from like five years ago. And that actually brings me to my second point, having a centralized file storage system. So not only does keeping all your files in the same place eliminate scattered files, files, but it's also really useful in a collaborative environment as well. Like for instance, when multiple people need to access the same files, instead of having to keep a copy of the file on each person's device, they can all access the same copy on the NAS. And those files that are being worked on are updated in real time in case any changes are made, and it can also be useful for a single person with multiple devices having to access the same files across all their devices. But storing so much data in the same place sounds kinda risky, right? And that's when built-in redundancy on a NAS like this comes in. Storing my files on the NAS takes care of one of my biggest worries of data storage, which is data loss due to hard disk failure. It is a horrible thing to ever happen to anyone. Now, I'm not saying that the drives inside here will never fail, but it's very easy to set up the drives as a RAID array. In my case, I've configured them as a RAID 5. For those who are not familiar with RAID systems, oversimplified, it's something like trading some of your storage capacity in exchange for redundancy. For example, I've got a total of four drives amounting to 40 terabytes, but after setting them up as a RAID 5 array, I only have 30 terabytes of usable space, but if any one of those four drives were to fail, all my data would still stay intact. Because as reliable as these Iron Wolf drives are, there are still hard disks and they will still wear out over time as the case with all hard disk drives. So it's always recommended to have some sort of backup or redundancy protection when storing stuff on hard drives. And in terms of selecting what drive to use inside a NAS system, as mentioned, I'm using Seagate's Iron Wolf drives. So those are NAS optimized drives that ship with a standard three year warranty. But if you opt for the slightly higher end Iron Wolf Pro drives, that gets up to a five year warranty. And that includes for free what they claim to be world-class data recovery services in case of a drive failure for the first two years. So that's for if you need that extra peace of mind. But when picking out drives for a NAS, it certainly helps to use drives that are optimized for NAS usage, such as the Seagate Ironwolf drives. 
Those were designed with a few more considerations that make them more reliable in a NAS environment, such as making sure that they are durable enough for pretty much non-stop continuous access without ever stopping due to how frequently they're expected to get accessed, especially in multi-user environments. And as people who create content, that reliability is very much needed considering the amount of projects that we're running through hardware like this. And specifically for Seagate's Ironwolf drives, they are also unique in the sense that they have been fitted with vibration sensors because you've got multiple drives operating so close to each other in an NAS environment. So as you add more and more drives, that technology means that you won't really have to worry about the drives impacting each other. So the robustness of a NAS makes it a good place for you to back up your computer's data. And in the case for users of Synology NASs, you can download Synology's drive client and have it automatically perform either a backup or a synchronized task between your computer and the NAS. So for its automatic backup features, you can schedule it to backup certain folders onto the NAS at set intervals and have it perform the task at a particular time of day. And I find it to be very helpful because manual backups consume quite a lot of time. And as for the synchronization tasks, that works very similarly to the Google Drive or Dropbox desktop clients, which continuously keeps a local copy of the file in sync with a copy of the file on the NAS. And as long as your files are on the NAS, you actually have the option of accessing them anywhere as long as your NAS stays hooked up to your network. So Synology has developed this function for their NAS systems called Quick Connect, and that basically allows you to access your NAS from any web browser. That's cool because typically remote access to a NAS would require some sort of a VPN, but you don't really need that for Quick Connect. You just have to have your login credentials and you can access your files from anywhere. There's also a Synology Drive app on both iOS and Android for accessing your files from a mobile device. So it really is kind of like having your own cloud service. But one feature I really like on this NAS is the way it handles file sharing. I can generate a link to share any files that are stored on my NAS, just like any cloud service, but it's got some really useful security parameters. For example, limiting whoever I send the link to, to be able to only preview the file in the browser without the option to download the file, or requiring them to key in a password upon opening the link before allowing them to access the file, as well as putting an expiration on the link so that it's no longer available after a period of time. So all those are very nice features to have, but I would like to end by talking about pricing for a moment because NAS systems like this are unfortunately not cheap. An MT Synology DS1019 Plus without any drives inside currently retails for around $633, and a single 10TB Seagate Ironwolf drives costs $262, meaning this 40TB NAS setup here costs close to $1,700. So I was thinking might as well save the effort in cash and spend all that money to upgrade my Google Drive subscription. And that's when I started looking up the prices. A 30 terabyte Google Drive subscription costs $300 a month. So that is $3,600 a year for 30 terabytes compared to a 40 terabyte NAS for $1,700 that you essentially own for the lifetime of the product. So I guess NAS systems are expensive, but actually quite economically sensible at the same time when you think about it and consider the fact that they are scalable as well and you don't have to pay for it once a year. So this has been a longer video than usual. If you're still around, then you are awesome. There is quite a bit to talk about this thing. That is pretty much it for today. If you enjoyed today's video, do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon for more videos just like this. And I will see you in the next video. But until then, here's a bunch of videos, sorry, this side that YouTube thinks are suitable for you.